In my last two videos, we learned how to calculate the wattage our devices and, and equipment needs to operate. We also learned how to use the total amount of that calculation to design our solar energy system. In this video, we're going to talk about the necessary components for our project. Let's begin. God bless you all and welcome back to another video of this series, which I know it's been really helpful for many people around the globe because there's a lot of you sending me messages over email, social media. To all of you, thank you so much. The main reason I do this video is because God provided me with the knowledge and the skills and all I want to do is share with you guys so you can start doing your own stuff also. As I told you, we are going to talk about the components, the necessary equipment for us us to design a solar energy system. We're going to talk about solar panels, charge controllers, inverters, and the batteries. First of all, we have the solar panels. They come in different shapes, different sizes, also different capacities, and they are made in two different types of technologies, which I'm not going to get into, but you should know that. For now, the most important part of a solar panel is a sticker it has on the back. Let me just show you. I have a, a 30 watts solar panel right here and over here there's a sticker that's the sticker that you need to learn how to read when you're buying a solar panel because it has all the information the important information that you need to start designing your system you got your nominal rated wattage uh, the amount of energy is capable of producing per hour this one's 30 watts you have the maximum current that is capable of, uh, of producing you have the short voltage or the working voltage operational voltage you have the open circuit voltage and that's one of the most important aspects that you need to know and understand when it comes to solar panel because that's that's the number that you need to calculate your system every time you're going to use a charge controller which i'm going to talk about it really fast they have a maximum input voltage and it's going to be based on the open voltage of your solar panel that's it's like a safety measure that you take into consideration because if you design your system based on the working or the operational voltage you might go over the input voltage of the charge controller so take that into consideration next we're going to talk about the charge controller now charge controller they come in two types of configuration uh, don't mind this this is a cheap old chinese a charge controller but it's the only one that i have that it's that it's rated mppt but you know it works so you have your pwm or pulse width modulation and you have your mppt which is maximum power point tracking this is very typical you're going to see them uh you they sell it on amazon and ebay they cost about 10 to 15 dollars this is your typical charge controller when you have a system that is 12 volts or 24 volts nominal and basically the main uh service of this type of controller is that it, you connect the panel to it and you connect your batteries takes the panel voltage and brings in, uh, brings down the voltage to be able you know to handle the in and protect your battery another thing that you have to take into consideration is they have a fixed input and output basically this one is rated for 20 amps the maximum amount of energy or voltage that you you're going to be able to connect is 50 volts again it's based on the open voltage of the solar panel and the maximum amount of power that it's going to be able to output uh it's going to be based on your configuration when you do buy a mppt control which is going to cost you anywhere from 150 all the way up to thousands of dollars they are the, the granddaddies of the solar energy industry because they are capable of producing up to 30 percent more energy than a typical pwm most of the cases they allow you to input higher voltage from the panels if you have a 24 volts nominal system in your batteries you can have a 120 or 80 volts panels coming in and the MPPT it's going to bring that down to your batteries but one of the advantages is that if you connect your panels in series and early in the morning when the 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 tiniest amount of light starts shining uh, around the skies those panels they start producing voltage so the MPPT looks at that and as soon as it goes a little bit higher than the voltage that you have on your battery they start producing energy if you have a big system let's say 5k or, or, or 10 kilowatts 
use MPPT, don't use a PWM, you're gonna regret it if you don't take that advice. Third, we're gonna have the inverter. They come in two configurations, pure sine wave and modified sine wave. Right now, the lights that you see here and the fridge and everything around here, it's running on a modified inverter. But the most important things that you need to understand about an inverter is this. Inverters, they have two numbers, just right here. You see? Basically, it means that it's supposed to work at 1600 watts and the maximum amount of energy, it's 3200. So every time you see those two little numbers, the smallest one, it means that supposedly it's capable of producing that energy continuously per hour. The other one is the surge. It's the maximum peak of energy it's capable of producing for five to 10 seconds. Some of them might do 20 seconds. Last part, but the most important, it's the battery. Batteries are going to be the heart of your solar energy system, especially if you're doing something that is gonna be either hybrid or off-grid. Just keep in mind that the information I'm going to give you is gonna be based on two things. The DIY power wall kit that I use, that I design and I produce and I sell on my website. And second one, I'm gonna talk about the lithium batteries that I use for that project and for my kits. Having said that, let's begin. As you know, I'm building a battery for my system. This whole series is based on that final project that I'm building. You can make modules, they look like this. This is a 1S, meaning one series battery, 20 batteries in, uh, in parallel. And then you can take different modules the same size and connect them in series, which takes the voltage from 3.7 all the way up to the amount that you need. For example, a 7S or 7 series battery, it's 25.2 volts. Another important fact about lithium batteries, they have a maximum voltage and a minimum voltage. Go higher than that, you're gonna damage them, or worse, you can start a fire, go lower than that, and you also going to start a fire. So keep that in consideration because you don't wanna damage your batteries. You wanna make sure they stay cool. You don't over discharge them, you don't overcharge them, and also you don't use too much current from them, or you don't input too much current in them. Everything has like a balanced uh, usage in them. And when you do that, you have a safe battery. Well, my friend, that's all for today. Hopefully information that I just gave you, it's going to help you be closer to start making your own project or to complete the project that you already started. If you have any doubts or questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. In my next videos, I'm going to get very technical because I need to start making this battery because in a few months, there's going to be hurricane season all over again and I need to get ready for that. So we need to start making the battery. We need to talk about the panels that I'm going to use the inverter that I'm going to use and you know that's the whole idea with this project like take the information that we have now and start putting everything together having said that please subscribe to this channel and that way you will never miss a video on, on this series and the new series that I'm working on which is it's not going to be about solar but it's still going to be attached to the batteries and this type of technology uh, let me just give you a hint it rhymes with robots Oh yeah. So please consider subscribing. And also if you want, you can share this video with your family and the people that you love. So they also get ready for hurricane season or they lower their monthly bills. And as always, remember Jesus Christ loved you. He already died for you. He resuscitated from the dead just to let you know that he loves you very much. And he already forgot and forgive all your sins. See you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.